You can thank God you're white. <laughs> you know, I, I liked Diodato. I, again, I've made four or five movies with him. He was much more over the top and excitable than Margariti. Uh, and sometimes his uh, producers were less... Margariti had control of everything. Diodato didn't necessarily always have control of everything. But I've made some very fun movies with, uh, with Diodato. Cut and Run was done in, in Cut and Run, that's right, it's coming back now. Cut and Run was done in uh, Venezuela. And that, of course, now I realize, I, I don't know why I thought it was in the Philippines, but of course, you're absolutely right. That was the movie with um, Pretty Blonde Girl from um, Officer and a Gentleman. Uh, what was her name? Lisa Blunt. Lisa Blunt. Yeah, she was in it. Willie Ames, that was it. But you know, there's always such pressure on American actors to behave like a star. And that was his problem. He wasn't an unpleasant guy at all. Nobody quite knew where Leonard came from, but he was, he was the lead. And I think this was the problem. And the other guy felt he should have been the lead. But you're right. I mean, I yeah, was, the, I was the, the henchman for the, for the cartel. I'm saying I got cut and run because of another movie I'd made earlier in which I play another guy who beats everybody up and treats everybody badly. Wow. Roma Violenta, it was called. But, uh, so violent Rome, I think they called it something else. Yeah. And I remember reading the script, I was machine, I, I machine gun kids in the street, I thought this is a load of rubbish. And I read the script and I said, I can't do this crap. And I said to my agent, what, what should I do? She said, well, ask for $5,000 a day and see what happens. $5,000 a day then was a lot of money. So I asked for $5,000 a day and I got it. And I think I was 10 days in all and shot maybe three of those days. So the part was very small. It literally made my name overnight. Everybody would stop me in the streets. And that's when I really started taking off and why they gave me so many of these kind of movies. And that was towards the end of the Philippines. In fact, I'm not sure that that wasn't the last movie I made in the Philippines. Things were a lot more edgy in, uh, mm. at that point. And you know, there would be military guys on the set just to keep us careful. So we, we were a lot, you know, it was a lot uh, huh. more edgy. Uh, also, the production, it's interesting, the production was the same producers who had made the first Margariti film. Huh. And they would got, the, the, the German guy was back in the, in the script. I can't remember who the other people were, though. There was also one I made um, in Morocco, uh, Roadrunner, absolutely crazy. And it was way over the top, and really, it, it never went anywhere, never did anything, but it was, but it was with uh, um, Asionides produced it, uh -huh. who had done the other movie that I had done, you know, Beyond the Door 2 and uh -huh. Made a Fortune. And, uh, but, so, I've always had, I, I made a very good movie, a, a very fun movie with Diodato in uh, Sicily. And as I say, this one in the Philippines, which was mm. sort of fun. I mean, there was great creativity, you know. Yeah. Margariti was the best at this kind of thing. Yeah. He, he started them, and you know, it was in the days of the, the video cassette, so there was a good market for them. Uh, actually, that's really what I decided to do when I gave up being an actor. I was trying to put these little packages together, but already it was getting much harder. And in fact, after a couple of years, I had to give up. I, I couldn't get anywhere. But you know, you would get, you'd raise three hundred thousand dollars in Italy, which would cover your crew uh, and probably an American actor and the other actors and the script. And you'd take that, you'd go to the Philippines, where they would provide you with everything you needed, or to Turkey, or to North Africa, or whatever, where they would provide you with everything you needed. Mm -hmm. And then you would keep a, you know, you'd give the Philippines for that, you'd give them the Philippines market. And you would keep, end up by having about 30, 40% of the world markets. You could make up to 
five million dollars, three million dollars, between three and five million dollars on a on cassette sales. So it, it was a very good deal. It, it would cost three hundred thousand dollars to the Italian producers, but they'd end up with forty percent of the of, of the sales rights. Now probably they had to divide that with the people selling the movie, but you know it it it's still you could you could make ten times your money, invest three hundred thousand, and you could make three million back. The cinematographer, the set dresser, the costume designer, uh, assistant director. Or sometimes even the system director would be Philippine, but it depended. Later, they got better at supplying crew members. In the beginning, they were nearly all Italian. It was a, it was a sort of ten-man Italian crew who did everything. Uh -huh. Lighting, camera, you know, everything else. That was all supplied by the Philippines. See, the explosions, all the below, most of the below-line stuff, extras, uh, sets, uh, everything else was supplied by the Philippines. And the Philippines would take, you know, probably the Philippines, China, uh, I don't know. Right, their, their markets. Yeah, that's right, Far East. But all the finishing, the film, all that came from the Italian side. Mm -hmm. But you know, in those days too, $300,000 was a lot of money. But you couldn't make, you couldn't make 10 million back on a movie like that today, and that's the problem. Right, right. You know, yeah. Costs have gone up, but the returns are much less. Yeah. I actually think when I made this movie, uh, it, it was getting really towards the end. Well, that was Hit and Run. Hit and Run was literally the end. That was the last movie I made in the Philippines. Cut and Run, you mean? Cut and Run. And I have a feeling I was also flown in and flown out for that movie. I think I, think I was only there for a week. See, this is where they were starting to cut corners, because he was the producer, the director. Gabriella Tinti, I knew independently of this movie. I mean, I've known Gabriella before. He was, he was also a great friend of my wife's. Um, and so, you know, I've known him for a very long time. Mm -hmm. um, he's an old trooper, mm -hmm. you know. He's, he... Married to Black Emmanuel. Oh, okay. So, and, and she had a, 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 a moment, you know, a great moment. Uh -huh. But no, I've always liked, you know, he, there was Gabriele Tinti and um, who was the other guy? He was dead now, actually. Your journey ends here. Forever. We'd flown in two tiny little. Dakota biplanes from uh, uh, where had we started? If we went to Kanaima, which is this place, you know, with the Angle Falls, and it's really beautiful. And we arrive at the end of a long journey, having been three hours flying over the jungle. Um, and uh, we come to this hotel. And the hotel is sort of very Spartan, and you know. And we walk up to the reception, and I hear a woman saying, "Ah, Mr. Steiner, is that an English name?" And I said, "Well, no, it's actually Swiss." Ah, I am Scottish, with a very heavy German accent. And as you know, Venezuela was famous for all the Nazis that hid out. Uh, after the war, they all disappeared to Venezuela. Venezuela is actually staggeringly beautiful, but it's, it's, a, it's, it's a jungle. It's an entire jungle. It really is like the Wild West. It, it really is. Mm. I loved the Venezuelans. They were really warm and sweet people. It's a pity it's gone the way it's gone, but they'll get over it. You know, they'll work it out. Mm. Um, but oh yes, Cartagena. And I remember him walking out of the hotel and going into a little pond, swimming in a pond. And I got into the water, and I suddenly, the water was like coffee. It was brown with, with peat, with just natural things. It wasn't dirty, mm -hmm. you know. Mm. But that's the deep jungle. Oh, and there were, there were snakes. There were all sorts of things all over the place. It's all come back to me now, suddenly. <laughs> Cut and run, it was called. Yes. Yeah.